Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. In my previous video, I recapped my mesh tactics story so far, all the way from playing with my Helltech capsule sensors, the little GPS trackers, playing with the Helltech V3 with mesh tastic on it, sending messages back and forth. Then I put a longer antenna on it and found out there's a whole community of mesh tastic users in my town. So I mounted this rooftop antenna with the solar panel and that node is up under the eaves with a 18650 battery and so it's all on its own in low power mode with no Bluetooth connection, etc. Yeah, I remember last week I was out at the rocket launch site with AD94 uh, 6814, you can look up those coordinates of 6814 and D404, and I actually got a packet from my roof mount antenna, you see that down below, 7D2C reported in at that very minute. And this is how far away it was. By car, it's uh, 32 miles, a 47 minute drive. I'm sure it's a little shorter. So I must have used the mesh. I think I saw clients out in Marana, up in the uh, northwest there, and that's how I got to see my roof antenna all the way back home. It followed this path here, yeah, up through Marana and then back down into that uh, other side of the Tucson Mountains there. So I got, I got my money's worth out of the mesh anyway. So someone suggested I should switch my uh, rooftop node to router and client mode. It basically prioritizes that node to respond quicker to resending packets. A regular client will wait to see if someone else retransmits a packet before it does, so there's a delay. But if it's a router, it says, okay, I'm going to ship it out right away. And a router node would have to have connectivity virtually in all directions uh, to best serve in the router role. Uh, yeah, if you go straight router, it disables Bluetooth, and so you, they're suggesting set up an admin channel. So we're going to talk about a couple things here. The client role configuration is something we're interested in talking about. Let's take a minute to check that out. Yeah, so these are the various device roles that you can configure. Client's the default one, and most, most likely that's the one you're going to want to use. You're going to join the mesh on that channel, and you're going to forward uh, packets and you'll be able to have a shared message for that channel and you can send direct messages to individual nodes. Tracker, I'm interested in that for my Helltech capsule sensors. I wonder if that'll change their behavior. Yeah, down here are the router and router client. Looks like router client's the best of both worlds. You'll have the routing priority and all the features of the client, whereas the router, it's going to switch off the Bluetooth and the display, etc. We'll see that here when we look at the comparison. Yeah, so client has the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and serial connection available, and the screen is enabled. Power consumption is regular. It retransmits packets. It's not prioritized for routing, and it's visible in the node list. Whereas the router, yeah, look at that. Router client uses the highest power consumption. We're going to take a look and see how my solar node is going and router uses a high power consumption. So let's look at the power. At 4 a.m., that uh, little 18650 battery is at 47%. Feel pretty good about that. But then by sunrise, I'm down to 36%. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle higher power consumption or highest power consumption. You can see here an hour later the panel is lit and I've begun charging them at 56%. Generally, it's 11 or 12 o'clock, and the battery's fully charged. Part of my problem is I don't have the solar panel above the line of the roof. So about 3 o'clock, there's a shadow that begins to get cast on that panel. I'm working on raising it up, so we'll talk more about that in the future. So I think I can get a couple more hours of solar power just by moving that above the roof line. I'm working on that right now, in fact. <laughs> but regardless of whether I want to adopt the router client mode or not, I want to establish the admin channel because, like I say, I have to go climb up a ladder, open the box, push reset, just to get the Bluetooth switched on for a minute so I can administer that device. 
it says I need a channel name of admin in lowercase and a pre-shared key. But they're using the Meshtastic Python CLI to configure the admin channel. So tells me we're going to have to learn something new. Yeah, they're demonstrating all of the Meshtastic Python CLI commands here to establish the admin channel. Let's see if we can configure an admin channel in the Meshtastic web client connection. Okay, that's our primary channel. You don't want to mess with that. So we're going to click on channel one. There can only be one primary channel, we're told here. So that means this is going to have to be secondary. I'm going to type admin lowercase. But how do I generate a 16 byte pre shared key? Well, Copilot, I searched there and it gave me this Python code that says it's going to generate a, a 16 byte hex pre shared key. That's the function. You just call it by saying generate PSK. And this would print the pre-shared key. Uh, that's not quite as convenient as I'd like. And again, I have to go through and actually make a video about installing the Meshtastic Python CLI to show you that. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. Yeah, let's see how to do it in Android. Go ahead and hit radio configuration, channels. It's loading up the channels. Hit the plus sign to add a channel. It's easy enough to type over that. Admin in lowercase. And you see down below, it's already generated a pre-shared key, and I can refresh it to generate a different one. So you can, you can configure the admin channel in the Android interface. Of course, we'll want uplink and downlink enabled, I imagine. And then we could just hit save and send that to our device. In spite of being able to configure the admin channel using Android, you're still going to use the uh, Python CLI environment for any of the other configurations. So stay tuned. That's going to be the next video. We're going to go ahead and install the Python CLI Meshtastic environment. And we're going to go ahead and use that to configure the admin channel and try out some various administration uh, functionality. Yeah, because this remote node administration relies heavily on the Meshtastic Python CLI. So we're going to focus on that entirely. Stay tuned. So give this video a like. Leave a comment down below. And before you go watch more of my Helltech Meshtastic videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.